um yesterday we started with looking at issues in prayer um that some difficulties that most um, believers find especially when they begin to engage in prayer um i, I want to say the majority of these issues will be at uh, the kindergarten level of um, operations um, in Christ and the kingdom of God. And yesterday we started with looking at one of the most frequently encountered issues. And we spoke about the wandering thought or the wandering mind. And I believe yesterday we started by um, giving a very simple definition that wondering a wandering thought is that condition which um, a person finds it difficult to remain focused on a given task at hand. And this is predominantly because the mind begins to stray, stray away into random, several thoughts. Many times we have come to identify that some of these thoughts are sometimes really strange, sometimes really funny, many times quite quite funny except that it's it's not funny because um, we want to pray and we want to um, connect with 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 the realms of of glory and enjoy the benefits of being called into oneness with Christ and we were able to identify three kind of minds and we mean abnormal states and yesterday we were able to deal with the first which we mentioned as the busy mind and we were able to explain that this comes from the business of the day and the activities especially the activities of an unguarded mind Um, I would like to emphasize on that because everyone goes through the activities of the day and that should not be the the business of our living day by day should not be an hindrance to prayer so what causes that abnormality and unguarded mind and we say that's when a person lives their day without the focus of Christ, knowing that he's the essence of all things and he's the source of all things and that everything that we do should bring glory to God. In essence, we were able to also draw from that teaching yesterday that whatsoever that we would do or whatsoever activity that we engage in that will not bring glory to God or that will not facilitate facilitate the 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 glory of God in our lives then uh, permit me to say that such activity is an illegal activity for a child of God to participate in and we were able to look at scriptures yesterday and we were able to deduct from the scriptures that one of the ways to curb the busy mind in prayer is to guard our hearts is to mind the things of the spirit we learned yesterday or were brought to remembrance yesterday that the mind of a child of God is not supposed to walk by or walk independently but 
in dependency um, on the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And we must train our minds to receive instructions from the Holy Spirit. And we were able to give that word and that the meaning of that process as transformation. Today we're going to talk about the weak mind. Now we said that um, the, the busyness of the day is not fundamentally, or a busy mind is not fundamentally um, um, a demonic activity. It's not. It's not. Although it's part of the trick of the enemy to overwhelm us with things and get our hearts into um, different activities. But it's fundamentally not an oppression because it may just exist on its own, just in that form. But when we look at the next stage or the next kind of mind, which we call the weak mind, um, it's a state whereby a person fundamentally lacks the ability to focus. A person lacks the ability to focus. Um, I gave, I think maybe yesterday I was giving some, uh, I was giving some characteristics of a weak mind. Um, maybe today I will just list them out. Number one, we we'll see forgetfulness. Number two, we will see a scattered and unarranged thinking or thought process. Number three, that was number two. Number three, we would see indecisiveness. Ability to make concrete and sound decisions. Number four, we will see absent-mindedness. So, all of a sudden, you see people just blank. Okay? And um, it, it really happens a lot when the devil oppresses a person's mind. And... Um, It is not. It's not a cool state. I don't know if I can put it that way. It's not a cool state. Um, number five, I guess, we see lack of focus. So, um, when a person cannot really focus on very important things, you know, when there is anything that can change their life when there's anything that can transform their life you know a typical demonstration of um a weak mind will be i don't know if you've met people um, they are characterized like you see today they are learning um, computer trade tomorrow they are learning musical trade next tomorrow they are learning so you see their inability to press on anything to get results. So you see that when the devil begins to operate in people's mind in such a way, um, you see that they don't achieve anything in life. They are always here or there or here or there. And you see, maybe someone will just say, why don't you um, decide to do one thing with your life? And You know, now that's a weak mind. So when it comes to, when it comes to prayer, um, you begin to see that, like I said, that these um, variations of the operations of the mind, um, it's not just a prayer issue. I think I said that yesterday. It's not just a prayer issue. It's just that f prayer is fundamental to the life of a believer. That's why we are analyzing um, this in these terms. So you see that a person... Um, in prayer if we are looking at this uh, frequently we want to pray but lacks the ability to have a fruitful mind in the place of prayer i don't know if um, you understand what i'm saying so 
this is a person that if, if a person presents with to you um with this i don't know why i'm talking like a doctor now present to, to you with these symptoms let's put it like that um one of their complaints will be i really do try to pray but i can't pray okay i really do try like now this person is not having a problem of like fundamentally scheduling do we understand how do we, are we understanding so far mm-hmm. and i hope my voice is not so um or nice today <laughs> manage it i beg you manage it um so the person will tell you i'm scheduling prayer but I, i'm telling you the truth i can't pray i can't pray because and many times it's not um it, 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 when the devil is operational in these things let me take it a little bit from just prayer even the word of god um studying the word of god will tell you that when i read the bible i can't focus um it may also have presentations like um uh, you see people will tell you that i can't read my books how many of you how many of you have probably experienced or had someone who tell you that anytime i try to read my book i can't focus it's a little bit different from um the business of the mind because um the business business of the mind the things coming to your heart are just activities of the day and now i'm just thinking in a weird state the devil can combine it for you you know can be plenty but let's deal with them one after the other now such a person lacks you know um this also let me look for another presentation of this this also is the reason why a person can also not retain spiritual revelations and spiritual truths uh i remember one time the um the holy spirit was telling me this um i don't know if this has happened to um a lot of um anyone here this used to happen to me one time and i i think this was when the holy ghost um revealed the this um operations in the spirit to me this operations in the spirit to me was when i received revelations from god but i cannot remember how many of you does that happen to it's almost like you are it's almost like you are the the the, the king of babylon <laughs> only that you can you don't have magicians to someone <laughs> you don't have people to threaten <laughs> So, um, I usually explain this in the sense that you know you've received something. The only thing that you can remember is that you know, just like that king, you know, you know you have received something, but you cannot, um, you cannot remember. Neither can you retain the the things of the spirit. It's because the mind is weak. Um, maybe in a certain stage, state. I hope I'm not. Um, I hope I'm not confusing us. In a certain state, it may just be not pathological but physiological. In the sense that the muscle of your heart has not been exercised now in this dimension, has not been exercised to retain spiritual truth. You don't read the word, you don't study the word, so your mind is very carnal. So um, your mind lacks the ability to hold that which it has received. But let's get back to prayer. Okay. This evening, I pray that the Lord will help us and help me tonight to be able to communicate um, what we have to learn this evening. So let me go back to a particular explanation that I was making, which was that the person would most likely the common presentation of a weak mind is i just can't focus to pray you know whenever i want to pray it's almost like my mind just offs it just goes like that's it you know my 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 mind fails me in the place of prayer now it's a demonic oppression um it's not that the person has demon inside of them but it's that their mind is being ma- manipulated by the enemy and um oh, the cure to this is to subject 
well, first of all, if a person is having these occurrences aside of Christ, of course, we know the prescription, the first prescription, right? What's the first step? Can anybody help? If you meet somebody who lacks concentration, ability to understand, ability to be very conscious and aware of that, what 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 was the first prescription salvation of course salvation of course salvation of course we need to introduce the person into the kingdom of god and into the, the life of god into their their um their spirit the holy spirit coming to reside in them now for weak minds the first thing after salvation is to subject the mind to spiritual activities or what we call spiritual exercises and it, it begins with the meditation of the word of God because it's the meditation of the word of God that trains your mind and your muscle so um, more of such a person I believe that um, the beginning of prayer for them and that's why most times when most people would suggest prayer to a a novice in the things of the spirit the first dimension of prayer that is subjected is to pray read the word of god amen and um that is simply praying out the scriptures um there are many there are many many aspects of you know many books of the bible that can help you um you can pray the realities of the um, of the new creation that you find in um, you find in the words of Jesus, um, which is primary key number one. You find in the later of the apostles. So you see things like the what we call the Pauline prayers, which is um, the prayers of Paul. You find in Ephesians three. Ephesians 1, you find in Colossians, in Philippians, it's just simply picking the word of God and declaring it because um, the, the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 130, it says that um, the entrance of the word gives what? Gives light. So, to such a mind, um, that mind has been engulfed by darkness. It has been engulfed by a whole lot of things. Even if we're not careful, we can even um, we can even get to that point when we allow like worries. Um, how many of us? Many times, maybe is, is anyone here who have experienced that? Um, when you have like a lot of worries and you have a lot of like issues. Maybe in life, like Nigerians would say, I've given you basketballs. How many of you have experienced this weak mind in prayer? You know, it's almost like you want to pray about the issue, right? And you just can't find the energy to pray. Is there anyone who that has happened before? Like, you just, you sit down no, to pray. This is not like, you know, it's not like you have problem of schedule. You sit down to pray, and it's not it's not even that your mind is thinking jello fries and fried rice or anything. Because at the end of the day, probably you're very overwhelmed by what you are going through. So you just you just find this in it's just almost like there is this inability to just like pray. So many times you see that you just stay, and most times, um, how you will know it's not wandering thought, what you will experience most in that time is um feelings of defeat okay um also blankness do you understand so you can you can just blank out for a very long time you get you can just like that's it you you also see it like even as a pastor you see it also um in church many times you you can know um it's you know people with busy mind can pretend to pray how many of you know when you have wandering thoughts you can you can pray because you can, you can, <laughs> you know our ID card now. Who knows what our ID card is? Who can tell me what I call ID card? You know, you, you root out your ID card. Does anyone know? 
yes not just don't 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 just say speaking tongues that will be abuse speaking on uh, on inspired tongues okay <laughs> on inspired tongues so you know you can be thinking about rice you can be doing mazo kotole brother you know you can even be you know you can even be texting you understand you can you know when your mind is um is at the business of the day you i'm trying to put a difference now between um a weak mind and a busy mind so you can see it even in prayer meetings you can see people who have this absent mindedness they are not in the they are, they are not in the midst of all these things they just stay there's, there's no shaking you want to shake them there's no fire from the mountain they just blank and that's about it so the best place to start like is the word it's the word of god the Bible says, let the word of God richly dwell in you. Amen. To richly dwell in you. Let the word of God richly dwell in you. You know, the Bible was describing this state. I believe um, something similar we can find in James chapter 1 verse 8. Let me see how the Passion Translation will put it. Mm-hmm. Mm. James chapter 1 let me see passion translation where are you verse 8 it says when you are half hearted and wavering it leaves you what unstable can you really expect to receive anything from the Lord when you are in that what condition so um, we know how King James will put it right it says a double-minded man, right, is unstable in all his ways. Mm-hmm. So that's one. That's one description of a weak mind. So um, maybe instead of you know, many times we are afraid of devil, the, <laughs> the 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 devil, the word the devil. So let's just say a weak mind is a mind that has been engulfed by darkness. Is that okay? I think that is user friendly. Okay, so, um, but we know who is darkness. But let's just say that a weak mind is the one that been. And darkness, um, don't look at it like. Um, what are things that can introduce darkness? Um, who can try? Who want to try? What can introduce darkness? Mm, let me take one out of the way. Sin. And. Um, let's talk about um, sin compromise all falls in the same um, in the same dimension so um, and I'm not talking about when a believer makes errors and quickly um, repents from it so we are talking about willful sin okay um, willful practice and indulgence uh, it deadens your mind now what about another what about sub two ones so two ones like a week in your mind worry fear introduces darkness okay so um and you know these are things that cripples you they darken your mind they darken your soul so um unbelief again is another thing unbelief when we allow unbelief in our heart you know our heart is um, unable to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in bringing in the absolute reality of God. Praise the Lord. So, um, these are um, reasons and um, if a person does not know, the reason why I'm taking time to teach you all these things is that um, not only for yourself, you can know how to help people or you will not be um, you will not be frustrated have you ever tried to pray with someone or help them in prayer before and you yourself you run away many times you know when you don't know where they are going you just be gingering you just be gingering you just be shouting you just be shouting person will be looking at you <laughs> and you don't know what to prescribe it's the word so in times like this you know 
um depending on the state you begin to give the word of god and uh, the word of god is active many times like it's good to be really accurate but i can tell you that by the message of god even by just introducing the very word of god you'll be so surprised so in those states when you find yourself in those states or if there's anyone here you're finding yourself in that state whereby it's almost like your mind is um is uh is dead in there is in, there is not just this ability is now if it seems like willful disobedience you have to you have to walk out by the enablement of the holy spirit get someone to help you because in the state of that we uh, deadness of the mind you find that that um you even let me tell you one manifestation of this deadness of mind like i tell you that these things are more than prayer um you on you know and understand the will of god but you have no strength to do what is right do you understand what i'm saying so you you know what god's will is so but you always see that you cannot exercise yourself you cannot exercise yourself to 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 work maybe as we've been hearing prayer 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 all of these days like it's almost like you're somewhere in your head like far away you know that you are supposed to be making progress in prayer but you're not finding that um that strength to do that so um it's almost conclusion time today i hope that i can address all of these issues um before the end of our session these 21 days because i really want us to be able to um, rise ahead and not just be able to be able to pray ourselves but to be able to affect people and help them um, in the place of prayer so um let me end here by just saying the first prescription for um, a weak mind most likely um a person that is undergoing this may need an external um an external i don't know um, how to put it an external boost okay an external boost and i mean um to connect to someone that has life or to connect to a system and an organization that has life or let's say an organism of life group prayers praying with someone and um, to be very like i always say i always insist on transparency and accountability and then you already know some of the things that like we have listed today that can cause those things if it's working in disobedience then you have to don't be waiting for the holy spirit sometimes to go and you know many times we think that god is in the business of exposing so you feel like if god if, let me, i want i want to speak pitching english today if god never exposed you never bad rich <laughs> meaning if nobody has said jesus has told me that you are worried then that worry is still you never serious it's not serious enough no if the holy spirit convicts you and know what is wrong it's okay to walk to someone and say this is what is happening i need help now um hopefully um, um the person will have spiritual intelligence and um the first place to start you is on prescription of the word of god and not just um a a canal reading of god's word but to mix that word with the spirit of god in the place of prayer and if you even know exactly if the holy ghost reveals to you exactly what the root cause is let's say it's worry or it's anxiety then you begin to charge yourself with words of faith you know you begin to charge yourself with the the the, the words of the of deliverance from the bible and you begin to pray, read the word of God. You begin to speak the word of God. That he that is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. And in these cases, you must speak. You must mutter. Praise the Lord. You must speak. You must exercise your heart. You must be committed to do the word of God. Amen. You must be committed to do the word of God. To enforce God, God's government in your life. You know, that's one thing. Um, one reason why you may need an, a, an higher authority because depending on the level of darkness 
you may need someone to rebuke the hold of darkness from your mind that you can do all by yourself if you understand these teachings that we are giving you can stay sometimes and you can't be in your room and say in the name of jesus every power of darkness over my life i will put it but you know that that is going to be legitimate when your life is synced with the holy spirit you will not still hold on to your compromising sin and be rebuking darkness as a matter of fact the darkness will just even be drawing back close to you more close to you so um we're already three minutes gone today uh so we're going to end here and i will start tomorrow i didn't want to um teach today because uh my voice was a little bit um some ways i was like i'll sit out today but um because of time i was like okay let's just come and see what we can do so does anyone have any question maybe one question we can maybe just stretch for two minutes more and then we continue tomorrow any question they don't if they don't sin so every unbeliever has a weak mind when it comes to the things of the spirit praise god it's why you cannot carry an unbeliever to prayer meeting <laughs> and expect him to kabash do you understand or study the word of god and who knows what scripture describes that the bible says there are two scriptures that comes to mind for to be carnally minded is dead so can an unbeliever be an unbeliever is carnally minded but a christian can also be carnally minded although he has received the facility of the spirit to be a spiritual man right and then the bible also said that what spiritual things sounds like foolishness to what to the carnal man because he has the inability to receive them now what is that inability to comprehend that's a weak mind because the mind is not powered by the force of the spirit of god and um, while a believer has a weak mind the cause of a believer's weak mind is the cut of supply from the holy spirit to the mind okay and the cause of a weak mind for an unbeliever is the absence of power do you understand mm -hmm. but although it's the same thing the i mean the outcome is the same thing but the cause is different so it's like two people are in darkness now you're in darkness in ukraine because you did not own your light do you, why do i want to shade nigeria like this but it's the truth if you're in darkness in ukraine it's because you didn't own your light but if somewhere in africa now somebody's in darkness because they do have power do you get so <laughs> two of them can they fall and break their head yes because the two places is dark but the cause is different okay mm -hmm. most believers that work in error function in weak minds uh -huh. all right any other question <laughs>